Good morning. We are in the midst of Parsha Shoftim, the Parsha, the portion of the Torah that deals with judges. That you should put judges and policemen in all of your gates and all of your cities that God gives to you for an inheritance. After the instruction for making good judges, the Torah tells us that if necessary, we should appoint a king to take care of our affairs and limits the king in what the king is allowed to do, instructing the king to be especially diligent in the study of Torah and performance of the mitzvahs in order that he not be proud and think of himself greater than his brothers. Then we go to the priests and then we go to the concept of a prophet. And the pattern that's emerging is you go from the judge to the king, not the king to the judge. And the question is, why does the Torah prioritize judges before having a king overseeing the entire government. And you see the same issue in dealing with public needs and public policies. If you asked uh, one of the presidential candidates what's the most uh, pressing need or the, the most pressing danger upon the society, he answered global warming, not radical Islam that was murdering people by the hundreds and by the thousands each year. And he would tell you, well, we have to worry about the long-term process, not the short-term process. And this, the Torah says, is a lie. You have to worry about the local issues first, and the things that you can fix now first, and then you worry about the global issues, the things that are large and that are happening outside of you. If you don't fix the local issue first, you have chaos, and you have destruction, and you won't have anything to save. The same thing is true regarding the community. Uh, Jewish communities, you know, they spend monies and have a, a long-term plan of how they wish to protect the institutions of the community. And for many years, the federations downplayed the role of the Jewish day school. And now, the day schools are receiving larger percentages. And the reason for that is, is that the federations are seeing that if you don't have children, there won't be any adults or there won't be anybody paying the federation in the future. So you have to invest in children first and foremost in order to have a future. And children's education is a local issue. It's not a world issue. It's not uh, making a desalinization plant in Israel or making water cisterns or planting tens of thousands of trees on the mountains. It's not as sexy. It's not as classy. But paying for the education of children is the greatest investment we can have for the continuity of the Jewish people. The Rebbe said this many, many times over. We're starting a new year. I know of a couple who were turned off by the fact that their day school asked them for more money than they could afford. And, of course, there are other issues there. But even after the school uh, changed its ways. They had turned off the couple and they decided not to send the kid to the school. What does this teach us? Not that a person should have a value for education. We have to teach people the value of education, but rather the people in charge of education have as their first and foremost responsibility to educate children. The federations have a first and foremost responsibility to make sure that the institutions can, can thrive. And therefore, the greatest single effort on the parts of the federations, the greatest single effort on the parts 
of the leaders of the educational institutions is to see to it that tuition is as little as possible. The level of education is as high as possible. And that instead of putting all the burden upon parents, remember, if it costs twenty, thirty thousand dollars a year, which is the average tuition in New York City for a child, then no one except for the mega rich can afford your tuitions. Impossible. So you say, well, they'll they'll raise it or whatever it is, we'll give a scholarship. No, it don't work that way. When you go ahead and you price out a person, the person will turn away. I know cases where the, the parents were professionals, they earned about a quarter of a million dollars a year, and they couldn't afford the, the, the tuitions, so they homeschooled their children. But how many people can afford to homeschool the kids? That means one parent that's got to stay home and take care of the kids all the time. Now the parents works. That doesn't always work out. You need two incomes most of the time. So the first and foremost job of the people in charge of the charities that we have is to see to it that tuition is at a minimum. People have to pay for tuition. If they get it free, it's not worth anything. But at the same time, it has to be extremely affordable and the larger the families, the, sh the smaller should be the individual burden. And we should encourage people who have more children by charging twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a year for tuition, you ensure that they will only have one or two children because they can't afford the tuition. So, we have to judge, you have to judge on local level. The first and foremost thing to judge is how you're dealing with children. What's gonna be for the next generation with these kids? Who's gonna ensure that these children will be Jewish afterwards? Only with a Jewish education, only with an affordable Jewish education. That's the first thing. Then you can worry about global issues and having a king and having a prophet and tell the world what to do.